Companies are tools in the toolkit of the entrepreneur, and cash is key. But sometimes things don't turn out as planned, and the company faces financial difficulties. And we'll, we'll talk about this today with Paulina Denhonen. Welcome, Paulina. Thank you. So, Paulina is uh, an attorney, a partner at one of the biggest law firms in Helsinki, where she has also served as the managing partner and chair of the board. She has started there 30 years ago as the first female lawyer, which is an accomplishment. And she specialized in company law and governance and in insolvency and voluntary liquidation. And she has been a long-term member of the advisory board for bankruptcy affairs. And Paulina is also the grandmother of two little girls. Uh, so Paulina, why is entrepreneurship important to you? Well, it keeps the society running. It's actually everything which is needed. It give, gives jobs, it gives innovation, and it's sort of a oil of the whole society. So sometimes a company runs into a situation where they don't have enough money, enough cash. So what is this insolvency? Well, insolvency means that the company cannot pay its debts when they come due. That is the definition of insolvency. So it's different from when they don't have enough equity or when they lose the share capital. Yes, it's different. Actually, company can ha have cash and be able to pay its debts and still lose its own equity at the same time. And then um, you have to either correct the situation of the own equity or you have to register the loss of the own equity. So you still have options and you can continue the business. So you don't have to finish and stop it at that time. Actually, it's very important nowadays that when, when you can establish a company without any share capital, that you uh, have own equity from the beginning. Because if you pay first invoice without own equity, it's, you have a negative equity from the day one. So it's very important to have not, not necessary share capital, but some sort of own capital from the beginning. And so the smartest students have already now understood that we are talking about limited liability companies or some form of capital companies here. Yes, because it's the um, main a structure that is used in Finland. What should a company do when it cannot pay its debts? Well, the first thing to do is to uh, try to negotiate with your creditors and other stakeholders and try to get new refinancing to the company, of course. Uh, but if you don't succeed in that, and you really cannot pay your debts, then the bankruptcy is the only option. And it is the board of directors who will then decide to apply for the bankruptcy. Of course, um, you have to keep in mind that also your creditors can apply for the bankruptcy if you don't act in time. Normally in Finland, tax authorities or uh, pension funds are active creditors because they have to cut the um, increase of the debts because it uh, grows every month. So that is the reason why they are active. Mm -hmm. And then of course it's advisable that you ask for advice. You can ask it from your own bookkeeper, auditor, or then contact a lawyer. What alternatives does the company have when it actually runs out of cash or it, it can already know that it runs out of cash in a month or so? Well, in a way you have four options. 
The first one is what I said earlier, that you contact your creditors and you negotiate. You contact your shareholders, ask for uh, more equity, um, capital injections, and try to sort of uh, sort the situation out. And then one option is uh, restructuring, where you um, apply for restructuring proceedings from the court, and there will be stay in, in when you don't pay your debts at that time when the situation is in a way cleared. And, but that is not possible if you don't have any money because the proceedings cost and you have to pay all the new debts when the restructuring application is uh, submitted. So without any cash, you, restructuring is not possible. Then the third uh, option is bankruptcy. And that is when you really don't have any, any money left and you sort of uh, give up. You see that there is no viable business left. And in that situation, everything is sold and paid and the, then the creditors will be paid dividend out of the, those money that is left. And then the fourth option is the liquidation, but that is possible only when the assets are, are bigger than the debts so that you can pay all the debts of the company. And all those three last options, restructuring, bankruptcy and liquidation, there is a uh, normally lawyer who is uh, administrator or liquidator in a position assisting assisting you or the company. So there's like an outsider, a lawyer who's not from the company and not one of the owners who then is kind of arbitrating, so to say, that, yes. it, that, so that the procedure is fair. Yes, only in, in liquidation situation, it means this voluntary liquidation. Um, there you can also be yourself or one of the board members can be the liquidator, but normally it's outsider also. Can, can you still highlight the main dif difference between bankruptcy and restructuring? So what is the purpose of bankruptcy and what is the purpose of restructuring? So the purpose of restructuring is to be able to continue the business of the company. So if you see that the business is viable or part of it's viable, then you can choose this one. But bankruptcy is end of the story. So it's finished. And then in uh, bankruptcy, the bankruptcy administrator can, of course, try to sell the business of the company. Uh, and the, it is the duty of the bankruptcy administrator to try to sell the assets at high price as possible to get dividend to the creditors. So the company is, um, it's the end of the story for the company, but the business can continue. Yeah, and the assets here are sometimes also kind of intangible assets as the business or the, the kind of customer relationship, these kind of things. Yes, actually, nowadays, uh, most of the companies, they don't really have real estate, so that kind of assets, it, they are more intangible assets left. So uh, it might be the end of the story for the company, but is there also any risk for, the, for somebody else? Are there person, is there a personal liability or are there personal sanctions in these kind of situations? There might be. Um, board members and managing directors could be at risk, and that is based on our Companies Act. So if there has been a breach of um, duty of care, then it's um, towards bankruptcy estate, this uh, liability of, for damages, and the creditors and shareholders can claim damages, but only if there has been a breach of uh, law or breach of uh, articles of association. So it's a little bit um, different situation. So the um, 
liability is uh, larger towards the company and the bankruptcy estate that will come instead. Well, so if we look at what kind of cases we have had in, in Finland, so there have been cases where the board members have faced liability because they have not uh, registered the um, negative equity. So that's very important thing to remember. Then we have had cases where the company has not paid taxes without being insolvent. And then the board members have been faced criminal sanctions and also uh, damages. And then maybe m most in a way popular cases are where there have been distribution of funds against the company law, so-called illegal distribution of funds, and uh, normally to the shareholders or, or other close mentions. <laughs> and in this case, the, there is a personal liability of the, of the board of directors yes, okay. when they share, when they yeah. issue, uh, when they distribute uh, equity to close friends and so on. Yes. Or, or some, or favor some creditors to the detriment of other creditors. Yes. Or if you have transferred um, funds or assets without any business reason, mm -hmm. so breached your duty of care. For an individual board member or managing director, are there any ways they can kind of lessen this risk or mitigate the risk? Well, you have to comply with the law, of course. And then in when you are doing decisions, you have to follow the business judgment rule. So you have to um, get enough information and make a decision based on the information you have gathered. And then you should not have any, any um, connections, your own connections with the matter. So you can objectively do the decision. And of course, then you can have a, and you should have an insurance covering the also the work of the board and managing director. So basically, as long as you make the best decisions on behalf of the company in good faith, there isn't that much risk for an individual. Yes, you can say it that way. And if you comply with the law and also the articles of association. So for the entrepreneur who, who, who the, is in the business, what should he or she know? What is important? Well, um, at first, you should always follow the gas situation, the liquidity, in order to budget what's coming and you have enough, enough money to pay the invoices coming in. And as I said earlier, you, you should also follow the uh, amount of equity so that you will see when there are risk of uh, negative equity in the future. Then one thing that is also important is that um, um, you have to act early enough because in Finland, most of the cases, the companies, for instance, start to consider restructuring too late mm. when you have not the money to go through the proceedings. So you have to think about these things early enough. Then um, in some countries, of course, now we have been discussing about the Finnish law and it's different in other countries. So if you have companies also in, in somewhere else in some other jurisdictions, you have to find out what kind of uh, laws there are. But in Finland, there are no, no such thing that you should apply for bankruptcy in certain period of time from something that had happened. For instance, in some countries, uh, the loss of equity might mean that you have seven days and then you have to apply for the bankruptcy. But in Finland, we don't have that kind of uh, time periods. 
So then one thing to remember is um, to treat all your creditors equally. And for instance, you cannot pay the invoices of one creditor and leave others out, but you have to sort of a, have um, principles how you are treating your creditors. And the equal treatment is important when you see that there might be a risk of insolvency. And then, of course, uh, if you see that there is a risk of uh, bankruptcy, don't get panicked. Don't do any unusual, unordinary transactions because that is the sort of a um, um, problem that then will be figured out later and there will be special audits and everything will come out. So don't get panicked, get help and don't do any, any sort of unordinary transactions. So we were talking now a lot about insolvency. But what if the, comp the entrepreneur just wants to run down the business or the company? Uh, we have uh, provisions in our Companies Act uh, about this uh, voluntary liquidation. If you have enough assets to pay all the debts, then it's possible. If not, then the only option is bankruptcy. So the voluntary liquidation um, is possible when all the debts can be paid and maybe there will be some dividend also for the shareholders. And as a detail, most investors want to have liquidation preferences in the shareholder agreements for the exit cases and also for these kind of cases, but we will have an other discussion with an VC about these things. If you want to file for bankruptcy or, or if you file or your creditor files for bankruptcy, what happens if you don't have any assets or don't have enough cash to, to pay for the proceedings, for instance? Uh, even in that case, the bankruptcy will start and the administrator will be nominated. Um, we have a law saying that the state will pay a nominal amount to the administrator. But the bankruptcy proceedings will not continue until the end, but they will lapse after there has been um, first investigations done. And then if there is um, some kind of suspect that there has been um, transactions that could be recovered or, or there might be some criminal um, inspections to come, then the state can take the whole um, administration and pay for that. So that is also possible. But you don't have to worry that if there are no money to, to go through the bankruptcy proceedings. Uh, so how can entrepreneurs manage their relationships with the stakeholders in these kind of situations in, when you have an insolvency? What should they do? Well, um, it's very important to keep the stakeholders and also shareholders informed about the situation. The communication is very, very important. And then in certain cases, it's um, beneficial that you have an impartial outside external advisor discussing with the stakeholders because it gives some sort of a um, meaning of uh, or the feeling of the impartiality. What are the key takeaways you have? Well, first of all, forecast and follow the cash situation and also the own equity. So it is, of course, wise and important to forecast and follow the situation the cash situation and the equity situation, but for some entrepreneurs it actually is a surprise that some of these problems actually arise when your company grows really fast. And it's not necessarily so that your business is going down and you have a cash flow problem, but it might be that you don't have enough cash to grow. Um, exactly. And then one thing to remember is to um, ask advice early enough when you still have uh, more options to consider.
Thank you, Paulina, for having been here. Thank you very much.